Good evening. My name is Chinu Chinu Chan. I'm the pastor of the wonderful community of faith SA Matthews. I hope you may experience God's full presence with us this evening and enjoy the time together. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for being our ultimate home. We find love and hope in you, Lord. We experience safety and security in your arms. We are grateful that you never cast us out. You visually showed you being ultimate home for all people through Jesus Christ. And we decide to follow him and to be home for our homeless neighbors each and every day especially as we put our hearts and gifts together with the name Boston Share Network tonight. May your Spirit, your Holy Spirit, enable us to have a great compassion for our homeless neighbors and to be their home in our loving action. We pray all this in that precious and powerful name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
just want to share with you from the music world, a lot of study has been done about spirituals, and some of them were secret messages to the natives, uh, to the uh, African Americans, um, of how to follow paths to escape. And Wade in the Water, when I was doing the research, suggested that, the, let's go back just a bit, the, the uh, slaves would work in the field, toil in the field, and sing songs, their spirituals. And they learned and memorized their messages. And Wade in the Water was one that when they got to the stream, the water, they were to wade in it because the dogs could not follow their scent in the water. And so as you're thinking of this piece as we play it, let your memory wander to what you want to think about, but also think about the incredible faith in, in, that these African Americans had in one another, in the message, in God, and how they had kept their eyes open and their ears open. Wade in the Water by Benjamin Tucker. Thank you. 
I hope you are enjoying our program so far. I am Dorothy Wurst, the founder and president of Boston Share Network. I want to welcome you to our third virtual Spaghetti Supper fundraiser. My heartfelt thanks to all of you who continue to support our work with For the Homeless and Poor in Boston. It makes a tremendous difference in their lives and brings them hope. This is one story that was shared with me by Jamie Doyle, the communication director at Rosie's Place. When Shamika earned an athletic scholarship to college, she felt like she had won the lottery. At last, she could escape the instability of her family life and make her own path. But before her journey could even begin, an injury caused Shamika to lose her scholarship. Devastated and defeated, she lost her way and the hope that had carried her so far. She spent years sleeping wherever she could, couches, streets, shelters, and working whenever she could. But it's hard to stay at a job for long when you don't know where you're going to be staying that night. It seemed every step forward was followed by a step back. This was until she came to Rosie's place. Shamika found her way to Rosie's place overnight shelter several years ago. There she found respite at last and was relieved to know she could stay for three weeks. They were able to help with her immediate needs and over time, much more. She enjoyed hot meals in their dining room and began working with her housing and legal advocates on obtaining affordable housing. She also committed herself to working with Rosie's Place Mental Health and employment specialists to gain strength and build stability. What began as a three-week stay evolved into a relationship of trust and understanding. In time, Shamika began to set goals and she could see herself 
on a path to a better life. When Rosie's Place Employment Specialist heard of a training program at the Demolition Union, she immediately thought of Shamika, who was once again staying in their overnight shelter, awaiting approval for a housing voucher. Thrilled by this opportunity, Shamika quickly enrolled in the training. There were fees and logistical issues to manage, and Rosie's Place stepped in, helping with funding for the steel boots and hard hats required for the work, as well as testing and license fees. Weeks later, Shamika completed her requirements and became a member of the union. Not long after her job began, Shamika received more good news. Her long-awaited housing voucher had come through. Rosie's Place Advocates helped her to obtain a bed and furniture for her new apartment, and Boston Share Network, through our Moving Assistance Program, covered the expense of a moving company for Shamika, allowing her to immediately enjoy all the comforts of her hard-won home. She also received a $40 gift certificate from Boston Share Network to purchase cleaning supplies for her new apartment. Today, Shamika has a home she loves and a job she enjoys, and perhaps most importantly, Shamika has home. For more information about Boston Share Network, visit our newly updated website www.bostonsharenetwork.com And now, back to our show.
Sorry, Mimi. It's my turn. Hello, everyone. Depending on your age, it's either your favorite part of the night, or the part you've been dreading since I was on last time. Don't worry, nothing I say tonight is going to be too stupid, because, by popular demand, I'm going to be a bit more persuasive with my humor. And when I say, by popular demand, I mean my amazing grandmother, Dot Worst, told me to give a speech persuading the viewers at home to dye their hair blue. I should probably give a bit of backstory. Last year, I took a class on public speaking, during which all of us students had to write a persuasive speech. My teacher was a straight, white, 50-year-old, gray-haired man named Mr. D, who told the class to really swing for the fences, and provided us with a speech a student had written that had successfully persuaded him not to wear shoes. Actually, that's not entirely true. He didn't wear shoes at all for a while, and then his boss yelled at him for it, so he started wearing them into school but taking them off once he got into his classroom. Interestingly, I once overheard another teacher saying, I just saw Mr. D walking around with no uh, expletive-ing shoes on. But I digress. For my speech, I decided to try and persuade my 50-year-old, straight, white, barefoot, gray-haired male teacher to dye his hair blue. And it worked. It wasn't easy. But it worked. I initially wrote the speech as a small exercise to get us used to writing persuasively. I delivered it in front of my teacher and a couple of students who had absolutely no idea what was coming. I built it up slowly, listing some things that I thought made my teacher cool, including the fact that his first name is Chris. His face was a mask of confusion for the first 30 seconds or so, until I finally revealed my main purpose, at which point he started howling with laughter and pounding his fist on the desk. 
Once I finished, everyone in the class, including Mr. D, told me that I absolutely had to write a full five-minute persuasive speech on why he should dye his hair blue. I followed their advice and expertly crafted a masterpiece that Mr. D himself called shockingly persuasive. Don't forget that Mr. D is a straight, white, 50-year-old, gray-haired, barefoot, balding man named Chris. And he was seriously considering dyeing what remained of his hair blue. But that speech wasn't enough for him. So I kept up a relentless pressure for months until I had a flash of inspiration and I put a flyer on his door that said, listen to the people, dye your hair blue, you'd look like a boss, you know you would. But tragedy struck. Mr. D wasn't in school that day. However, people noticed the flyer and started signing it like a petition. So when he came back to school, there were over 20 signatures on there. For the record, I also put a flyer up outside the cafeteria that got taken down almost immediately by the irate principal. Anyway, when Mr. D came in the next day, he knew immediately who had put the flyer on his door. I freely admitted that I had, and we started chatting, and eventually he made the throwaway comment that if I dyed my hair blue, then he would do the same to his hair for a day. Oh boy, did I make him regret that comment. As soon as a few more people came to see him, I brought the conversation back to that comment and made him say it again and shake my hand in front of those witnesses that he would dye his hair blue if I dyed mine. And that's how I ended up with this. It's faded a bit, I know. I showed the speech that I wrote initially to my grandmother who said that I should perform it at the spaghetti supper. But that wasn't original enough for me. Now, I wanted to do something new and even more exciting. I want to challenge, I want you to challenge yourselves to do something you might never in a million years dream of doing. I know it's been a while since we've all been together for a fundraiser, but I remember the pre-pandemic times like they were 20 years ago. Just for the record, I'm 18 years old. Anyway, I remember the general appearance of most people at the pre-COVID spaghetti suppers. Most of them were over 40, and most of them were from the suburbs. The suburban life is a fairly quiet one. I should know, I live in Arlington. So why not spice it up? I challenge everyone watching this to throw a big party, complete with karaoke and a pie-in-the-face auction, to benefit Boston Share Network or some other charity that does great work. Everyone loves watching their neighbors get pie tins of whipped cream thrown in their faces. You could use it as an opportunity to get a little bit of petty revenge, too. A pie-in-the-face auction is the perfect time for you to get back at the kid who always leaves their dog's poop in your yard. You can bid on getting to throw the pie in their face, saving you the trouble of picking it up with a paper bag, putting it on their doorstep, setting it on fire, ringing their doorbell, and running away. Another way you could raise money is with karaoke. You could get people to bid on what song they want a singer to perform. I bet your 85-year-old neighbor Ruth Ann would love to see the burly muscle man next door singing Dancing Queen by ABBA. And if you decide to throw this awesome party, you've got to include a game of frisbee golf, also known as Frolf, the best frisbee-based party game. By the way, if you do have Frolf at your party, and you want a little more petty revenge on a neighbor, you could invite me and one of my friends over to kick their butts at Frolf. We could even hustle them for you if you want. Anyway, funny part's over. I'm persuading you to do the party now. I'm sure a few of you will start cleaning your dishes. Most, well, let's be honest, all of you watching are probably resistant to the idea of throwing a party like this. But therein lies the reason why you should do it. Escaping your comfort zone is one of the best things you can do. It opens your eyes to the possibilities of life and the incredible things that we might have otherwise missed out on. So don't sit idly by doing something moderately fun when you could end up having a spectacular time. Socializing with people you like is fun. Getting revenge on people who annoy you is even more fun. So feed two birds with one scone. If you, feel, if you need even more reason to throw your party, it'll make your neighbors think better of you. Because right now, I'm sure a bunch of them probably think you're boring. But you are not boring. In fact, you are a very interesting and fun-loving person with a very nuanced character, and, if you, and you need to drive home that point to your neighbors, especially those who don't see that within you. There are always going to be reasons not to do something, 
and throwing a party is no exception. But please, compare the risks versus the rewards of throwing this party. There are no risks. Nobody is going to like you less after a party except maybe the burly neighbor who gets forced to sing a humiliating song. The rewards for throwing the party are endless. You get revenge, you have fun, you form closer connections with your neighbors, you could raise money for a charity if you wanted to, and you can really run with the idea and come up with more creative ways to reward yourself and others. I bet most of you are good neighbors. Most of you are probably one of your neighbor's favorite num neighbors. But if you organize the best party your street has ever had, you will be everyone's favorite neighbor. Why wouldn't you aim for that? If God had granted me a son, a summer.